Hey everyone, I'm Halise, a digital storyteller and video producer. And I'm Mr. Halise, and I'm a chunky monkey from Funky Town. That's a Scrubs throwback. Oh, okay. <laughs> Welcome to the Stumblewell <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> that married couple that you know, just talking about different things and having a jolly good time while they do it. Music. <laughs> In today's episode, today's episode is going to be a bit of a and a style thing. Because it's easy. <laughs> I mean, because you enjoy it so much. <laughs> Mostly because, so y'all have been doing a really good job of sending us potential topics. Thank you. Thank you very much. Keep doing that, by the way. Um, the issue... These are my pleading eyes, like, please yeah, send help please. and questions. Yeah. But the issue we've had with most of the questions that y'all have sent... For us, we felt like we can't actually build a whole episode around those questions, but they are still good questions. So we wanted to kind of do a Q&A to answer some of y'all's questions that you've left in other StumbleWell podcasts via YouTube and get back to you with some answers. So is there a better, first off, sorry, is there ahead. a better way for them to submit them? I mean, the comments section, we have to kind of dig for them. Yeah. I mean... I think the comments is fine because okay. I see those. And then usually what happens is I see a good question or something that I think is worth answering in the comments in a StumbleWell, and then I put them into my Trello. Mm. So I think for now, you've, you've posed a question that I've been wanting to think about, which oh. is setting up an email for StumbleWell for people to submit topics and questions, that one-on-one. Patreon's also another good place because I just am going to pay a lot more attention to the Patreon producers. What a fantastic segue. Patreon.com forward slash Hollies. I don't know if it's forward slash. I just say slash. Anyway. <sighs> you get early so, access to content. We'll talk about it later. Special Monday motivations. Relevant. You know? And also if we reach uh, $10,000 a month, I get to quit my day job. And then he works for me. So it ain't, he ain't quitting. <laughs> He's going to be working to the bone. <laughs> Because I'm a workaholic. All right. That's okay. It's already to the bone right now. So, first question. Mm. Uh, what creative projects are, are like are we trying to do or have we always wanted to do and why? Mm. And this is from uh, No Overnight Guests is their <laughs> name on YouTube, which I love that screen name, No Overnight Guests. I've got so many. I can go. You, you can go. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> I actually want to do quite a few things. I really want to do an animated short film eventually. Mm. And like, I know which one you're talking about. Yes, I would love to do that so bad because that's actually how I originally got into film and video. I originally wanted to be an animator. Bit I, of trivia. What was the movie? Yeah. We talked about it earlier. What was the movie that led you to think about that? The Lion King. Yeah. And another thing, I actually really want to get into narrative video production a little bit more, like script-drawn narrative stuff. So I have actually been trying to get pilots written right now and things like that through StumbleWell to see if I can get them produced. Um, Wait, do so I know about that? You do. It's with Evelyn. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you know okay. about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, the hard thing is always just funding for that kind of stuff. So, again, Patreon, that's, like, the best way to support Think about supporting your favorite creatives on Patreon. Don't need to be me. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm happy to have you. But if you can support artists that you really enjoy, please do. Um, but for, before I get into mine, can you just check my nose? Is there a hair? You're, oh, you do have my, a hair that's up in sticking my nose. out. Is it just sticking out? Yeah. It's hanging out? Wait, mm -hmm. hanging out on my nose? Yeah, I can see it. It's right there. It's in my nose? Yeah, I see it. Yeah, it's I not see. part of the mustache? No, it's, it's a nose hair that is hanging can the camera see it? <laughs> I don't know. The camera can't see that. That's too far away. It's uh, too small. Swarthy people problems. Um, <laughs> what was it? Artistic projects that you want to... That you've always wanted to get off the ground or just to do? Uh, it's not really artistic, but I, I've always wanted to learn coding just because it's the wave of the future. Yeah. The trend of the future. Yeah. Um, yeah, and just to kind of play around with it a little bit. Another thing that I keep saying or talking about but not doing mm -hmm. is writing. Um, and I've done a little bit of it. I'm still very sloppy, but it's like a baby. It's like a baby learning mo locomotion. 
you know, like it's not pretty. People are like, oh, it's cute. It's trying to, it's trying to do whatever, but it's, it's literally like the infancy. Like it's, it's learning how to get up on its feet. And then once it gets moving, it's like, okay, you can't stop it now. I'm rolling my eyes, y'all, because he's a really good writer, and some of the stuff he's written has been really interesting, um, and I really no. want to make it into short films. Oh, yeah. So, anyway. That, I mean, so, that, that one's actually a, a pretty good story, but don't build it up too much, because then All people right. are going to say, well, why don't you post it? Okay. Yeah, that's the point. That's no. how I would get funding for the short film. No. Anyway. Criticism. That's part of being an artist. you got to learn to take critique. Um, next question. Next question. So, this question comes from esoteric one interesting um the esoteric one talking about couples that are or people that are low touch versus high touch and is there a way to compromise on that so they they're basically this is talking outside about, of sex yeah they're basically talking about first off thank you esoteric one they're basically talking about why are you sorry. talking over i'm sorry i'm sorry why? i didn't mean to why <laughs> don't weaponize the mic <laughs> um they're basically talking about pda and just being what is it called it's a love language uh touch i don't know any of those the touch love language it wasn't struggle but the thing that we kind of had some back and forth with was just holding hands and yeah. like learning to coexist in the same space yeah i think i was more touchy-feely at first you still are you think so i was gonna say i think you're more touchy-feely now no i no. think you're still more than me I don't I don't know if there's necessarily a compromise. I think that you have to just learn to adjust your expectations. Unless you really just don't like having a lot of like touch happen to you <laughs> by your partner. Then I may suggest not being in a relationship. Yeah, then maybe don't be with that person specifically. I think there are people that have less high touch. I feel like Tiffany and Diego don't actually touch each other that much in front of us anyway. That's fair. Mr. Halise does a lot of passive affection touches. Like I'll be sitting somewhere and he gets up to leave and he still like touches my shoulder, touches my leg. Like there just is, you usually, if you are passing by me, mm. you do, do some type of affectionate touch. You don't just pass by me usually. I mean, how am I positioned right now in front of the right. camera? We and have even, skin contact here yeah. and then up top. Yeah. So he's always got like some sort of hand on a limb. <laughs> uh, see, but subconsciously you do it. So in bed. Yes. Um, you kind of stick out a f- <laughs> Sometimes you just kind of stick out a foot. And I know that you're reaching. I'm trying to so find I'll put, you, yes. I'll put a foot and you touch my foot. Because you kind of ca- sure kitty paw it a little bit. and you then make sure somebody's there. I'm just saying. I'm not. It's not a criticism. Yeah. It's, it's cute. But you do it too. True. But I don't do it like during the day. That's like a nighttime snuggle snuggle thing. Got snuggle snuggle. <laughs> snuggle snuggle. Um, wait, so what was the official question? The question was like if one person is low touch and one, the other person is high touch, oh, how do, how you, do you find the compromise? And I don't think you do. I think, well, I think both sides can kind of give a little bit to it, you know? But I think you just end up having to figure out what the ground rules are. Yeah. Um, like what do you? What about the high touch? Do you absolutely not like? And then be like, can you not do at least that one? <laughs> I think that's one of the many, one of the many good litmus tests for a relationship because inevitably mm. it will come up. And then how does the partner bring it up? Yeah. Are they already annoyed? Are they annoyed to the point where they're like borderline angry? Mm. Or, and then how do you respond to it? So yeah, it's just gonna kind of work itself out in the positive or the negative. Or neutral. Yeah. Hey, could you not touch me as much? Because it's kind of weird or, you yeah. know, I, I always have dreams about roly poly bugs crawling over my skin and your touch feels just like a bunch of roly poly bugs crawling yeah. on my skin. So, oh, okay, well, cool. And I think it could be, maybe it's about experimenting with figuring out what types of touches maybe that you like more than others. Mm. So... For example, when we're walking, for the longest time you, you would just hold my hand, and you still hold my hand sometimes, but sometimes now it gets kind of like hot. 
it's hot mm. and we don't really hold hands. But every now and then you'll put your hand like on the back of my neck or on my shoulder or something like that. And I find that sweet. I think that's nice. And it's a little bit more of a minimal contact rather than just like I'm holding your hand and making you hold my hand. You know what I'm saying? So I think actually so I think there are ways you can compromise. You can try to figure out, OK, what's a more minimal touch for me as the low touch person? But I'm still giving the high touch person some type of intimacy contact because that's I know that's what they need right now. You know, well, what if the low touch person is just low touch as their preference? Ah, and so, yeah, if the relationship is, oh, I don't, yeah, if you want to hold my hand or something, it's, it's fine. I'm just not ever going to initiate it, you know what ah, I mean? Ah, that could, yeah, that could be a thing, too. Oh, I thought we were going to do it together. No. No. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Everyone, thank you so much for listening slash watching this episode of thank the Stumblewell you. Podcast. If you're new here, a few things, quick announcements, if you will. Um, like the video and or let the ads play let the ads play that really helps us out if you're watching us on youtube there's some problematic ads please don't ruin your spirit or your day yeah. by sitting through them yeah uh, do the best that you can if it's too much it's fine skip it understand if you're wherever you're listening to us uh please rate us on that <laughs> wherever you are listening please rate us that really helps a lot with people discovering the podcast apple podcast google podcast spotify yeah we're on spotify Does spotify lets you rate it though what a great question. If you want to take it a step further, um, support this podcast by becoming a patron. Patreon.com slash Halise. There you get early episodes. Uh, there you get early access to episodes as well as private weekly vlogs from me. And if you're interested in just learning about running a production company, the highs and lows. Amen. For those of you who have contributed or been one of the many producers that got us yes. above the thousand a month. Yes, the thousand dollar threshold. We hit Thank it. Thank you so much. Praise report. What are some other goals? Um, our first goal is to hit three thousand dollars a month because then I can officially hire an assistant editor. Yay. Then if I get to five thousand, Stumblewell can finally have a dedicated office because right now we only rent space when we need it. Um, slash work out of the apartment and i currently run the company out of this living room that we're sitting in right now <laughs> so and then at the ten thousand dollar mr Ali's can officially quit his job and work as the operations and production manager of stumblewell which he currently does for about three hours a week for free slash so be the general gopher slash maybe also become the assistant, assistant editor. editor. Oh my gosh, that would be so helpful. Slash writer, slash whatever else is needed. Yeah. And then into beyond. Into beyond. So, you know, that's the long term goals for Stumblewell. Anyway, join be part of this exciting startup. Get the buy in now. Do it now. <laughs> yeah. Finally, merch. Teespring.com slash stores slash Halise if you're interested. There's it's merch. Out there. Have you even updated that store for like iPhone 11s? I or? need to look and oh see. Oh my God. Anyway, back to the podcast. <laughs> anyway, this one is from Chantel Abdul Noor. I'm sorry if I'm saying your, name, saying your name wrong. How do you support each other mentally? Are there certain questions to ensure a good level of empathy in the relationship? Hmm. So for me, the last part is a learned behavior over the last several years. Okay. Um, to me, it's being available to you. So there's macro and microcosm for me, and I'm very much involved in the microcosm. So it's how is, how is everything, how is you know the overarching narrative of the nation, how is that mood, social media, just everything, everything that's now so prevalent in our, in our lives, how is it flowing through you? Because I am very not in social media for the most part. Mm -hmm. And so it's very om omnipresent for you. And so it's being available for you during those times. And then, yeah, work is emotionally draining and all that other stuff. But my remaining energy when I get home during the work week is devoted to you. So I, and again, that was a learned behavior. So part of that is having the empathy for you as well. And then out of 2018, 2019, where we were relearning ourselves as a couple, mm -hmm. um, I recommitted and turned inward, not, or turned, uh, when I used to get home, I used to turn inward. And now it's, I'm not turning inward. I'm turning, I'm turning towards you. Yeah. Um, 
so it's more just shifting. So then how are you doing? What are you talking about? Oh, you're still working. I'll go and do some other stuff. And then when you're ready to turn from work, then I need to turn to you. Yeah, I think I forgot if I remember who the relationship psychologist, I think that's what they're called, is I read, I remember I read, I think I sent it to you. I read this article that talk, they talked about what makes for a lasting relationships. Like what is the key personality trait you need to have usually? And the whole thing was that it actually doesn't really necessarily matter the differences that people have as long as they are willing to listen to the other person. Um, like as long as they're giving attention to the other partner, um, then the, the relationship's probably going to manage. Because in, in that action, there's already like a baseline of respect. Mm. You know? So something that, to go along with your learned traits, something that I do that is completely a calculated learned thing for me is that when you come home, I ask you how your day is. And I don't just ask with the understanding of like, it was good. You know, I purposely listen to what you're saying and it's like the yes and <laughs> of that. So if you're saying something like, it was okay, I was like, oh, why was it okay? Like the point is to get you to talk to me mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> because that is good. Even if the day was so-so and nothing major happened, nothing amazing came out of it or anything like that, which most days are kind of like that, um, I think that's like one very tangible step you can take to just be very in tune with your partner and give them at least that feeling that you legitimately care about how they're doing. Um, and there's been times when you've told me about your day that you were like, oh, I guess I did hate that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like it took you talking about it a little bit to be like, that actually really pissed me off, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and have some kind of realization. I'm like, oh, well, now you know that you don't like when people do that, you know? <laughs> it's part of, part of the empathizing process, I guess. Yeah. Um, I guess the other part of it is I'd, I wouldn't call it a death knell if your partner is not willing to engage or willing to listen or willing to engage you. Mm. But I think if over time, if that behavior is the trend, then it's like, okay, well, let's address it. And then if it doesn't change, then is this the right relationship? Yeah. And I think it's also important to figure out, because it's one thing to know what you want out of a relationship, but then it's another thing to know about what you actually need in a relationship. I think those are two different things. Mm. And part of, to go back into 2018 and 2019, I had to figure out for myself what I actually needed out of a partnership again, rather than what was ideal or what I thought I wanted, which it turns out for me, um, I enjoy a lot of quality time with you, but at the same time, like we can be, you can be doing your own thing for a day or two and I'm not really going to be mad about it mm. at all. So <laughs> if anything, I'm going to be like, Ooh, I'm going to get some work done, you know, cause I just like to work a lot. So it's about finding whatever that balance is. And it's kind of riffing off the question a little bit, but I mean, I've taken up some recreational video games yeah. again, yeah, but only with, with friends yeah. over Zoom, you know who you are. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I feel I feel bad because I've actually, over the last couple months, because of quarantine, we've been so invested in each other emotionally. Yeah. Um, that I felt bad doing it, but even then, it's okay. Don't completely abandon everything. Yeah. It's I still made dinner that one time before engaging the in the activity, and then. It was leaving and going and making sure, like, is there anything else that you want to do? Or, oh, you're still awake. Great. We can still talk about stuff. Yeah. I think, I know for me, if we're going to go into the video game thing, I know for me, and I know f the part of the reason why you feel that way is because when we first got married, you would play a lot of video games, mm. but you would not do anything else. Yeah. And it was very frustrating because at that point, we were still very young in the relationship. And so we were still kind of learning the details of how to live with each other. Mm. And so a lot of that was around like, can you do the laundry? Can you just like help with the daily runnings of a house, you know? Mm. 
And so that was actually what would frustrate me the most about the video game playing. It wasn't that you were playing them. It was that you really, you didn't get anything done. Mm. Um, and, you know, we had a lot of fights about that. And now, 10 years in, <laughs> yeah, I don't really care if you're playing video games now because you have learned what you should do in order for me to not care. You know? Well, and, and it's not like it was, it's learned behavior of, okay, so what do I need to do to play the video game? It's more just, I have other, yeah, it's just, I know what needs to be done. Yeah. So we can both be successful and we're not, I don't know sharking stuff yeah for me it was never actually the video games themselves it wasn't just like oh, all these video games not paying attention to me as a doting wife <laughs> you know it was none of that it was just that bruh can you just like vacuum and then i i don't i literally don't care what you do for the next seven hours if you just vacuum <laughs> before you do it you know like help me help you bruh and that was it yeah, I mean, that helps build empathy towards the relationship. It's that, uh, yeah, you just need that friction Yeah. to learn. And I guess the friction either turns into, you know, like, uh, not keloid, well, keloid or scar tissue or something. Like, it either, it turns either bad or you, or you grow from it. Yeah. It gets stronger or it, you know, gets that other way. Yeah, I think one last thing. And then we'll move on to the next question. I think people confuse confrontation with, oh, is this the end? Or, you know, or, man, are we not compatible? Or this, that, or the third. And it's just like, no, there's just some confrontation that needs to happen. And the confrontation is there to help you realize that what you actually need in a relationship versus what you want. And the big thing is about how can you communicate that? well right. i will say for me in the beginning with the to bring it to the video game thing again just because that's the only thing we're talking about is like i did not communicate well where it's just like hey if you just help me out i don't care what you do with your time you know i would just be in the corner salty just like this is why you're trash you know <laughs> and stuff like that where it was just like but what figure out in your mind what is the actual tangible thing that they need to do to adjust accordingly mm. and vice versa, you know? So she says, I've observed many couples that take no stock in the other, like within the other's profession. Um, do you find yourselves curious about the other's profession and did that happen at the onset of the relationship? Fun fact, I had no profession and or career at the onset of the relationship. Yes. Even several years into the relationship. Yeah. And then... Garbage jobs. Uh, I think my career path is literally why we got married. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I was. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I was interested in what he wanted to do professionally when we were dating. Um, yeah, I remember when we were dating. Uh, I was definitely interested from the onset. I don't one? know how you can be with someone and kind of not know what they're leaving the house eight or nine hours for to go do. You well, know you, what I'm saying? You had told me at some point. <laughs> I don't know if we were married yet or if we were dating, but I think you said it doesn't matter what you're doing so long as I see that you're working towards something. Yeah, and that was mostly in regards to I knew you were you didn't quite know what you wanted to do with your life. Mm. You but for me it was more that I think my mindset in saying that to you was that um one, I'm not I'm not getting married to get taken care of. Mm. That's a big thing that I feel like every now and then I have to bring up with like older generational people that I'll talk to about my relationship with you. Um, I didn't get married to get taken care of. I got married to have a partner in life all around. So I wanted to make sure you knew that. And then I think the other thing was that I already knew you were driven to do things if you just had the right internal motivation. I knew you weren't very externally motivated by things and it had to be all within you. But for me, it was like, okay, the fact that you grew up where you did, had the life you did and still made your way to Notre Dame and did that. Mm. I'm like, I already know you're a driven person because that takes a lot, you know? So I'm not concerned that you won't figure something out for yourself. You will. It's just going to happen when you decide you want it to happen, <laughs> you know? Yeah. 
and I can be okay with you trying to decide what it is for a while. Yeah, again, worked at a call center, was a unit clerk slash secretary for a bit. It was like two years each in those jobs, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was, I, th I still think that my profession, even though I'm, I'm vested in it, my profession right now is uh, prior recession, the Great Recession mm -hmm. career, where it was, what has the most marketability? What can I get into relatively quickly? And then what has the most potential return? And so nursing profession, everything worked, getting pretty well compensated at this point. So it's it's not necessarily something that I always wanted to do. Yeah. But it's, you know, financially speaking, it was it was the thing that gave us a leg up. Definitely. And actually got me into a career. I also think maybe another aspect of that is just because we did meet each other so young. And so at that point, neither of you are really established in any sort of profession yeah. or career. You're still figuring things out. And it just lends itself well to trying to figure out those things together rather than on your own and having yourself be established. Like people that meet in their 30s and 40s, you know, They've figured out so many things career-wise usually by then that, yeah, by the time they have a partner, it's kind of like, I'm used to not sharing this information, so Well, I mean, I've whatever. got a, a good, um, uh Just trying to, like, think about the type of people there. She's saying that she's met couples that have never, like, just aren't that vested in each other's careers, you know? Um, I feel like that would be something. I can understand that happening for people that meet later in life yeah so 2016 when you were pivoting from uh, not you were trying to get into contracting quote unquote like i yeah i don't that's when i started stumble well well so i i feel like there was there was a part of her question uh, that involved you know what do you what did you think about the other person's career mm. so at that point there was reservation about what you were doing for the pivot yeah because you weren't exactly verbalizing it very well. True. Because um, I kind of didn't really know what I was doing. I just knew I needed to change. And we were in transition, life and financially, life-wise and financially. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know what you were talking about. And so you said, you know, what if you, what if I was doing this or what if I was doing that? And I would think and say, I, I don't know. I mean, with such a vague description, I guess I'm okay with it. But what would you do with the time or what would you do instead? And you said, oh, well, I would try to build up, you know, YouTube and things like that. And I thought, oh, okay, well, YouTube seems like it's going to take you a while to get mm -hmm. really good uh, reimbursement from it. And it did. It took four years, right, from 2016? I mean, I guess that's one way to look at it. Well, actually, I think you went... I didn't... You went ham in it 2018. Did I? Yeah, you didn't do it 2016. Yeah, I w well, so I waited until 2018. You waited, yeah, until 2018. But then even in 2018, I still had reservations about it. But then you proved me wrong. Yeah, I mean, if anything, for me, the big thing was that um, I always wish I had started sooner. Because mm. now it's like, yeah, I took the sabbatical for the first half or from this year, I guess. And I keep forgetting that you did that as a sabbatical. yeah. And yeah, in the year, in this year of actually just focusing on it, ended up gaining 25,000 subscribers or whatever. So it's just like, if I had started this in 2016, how far would I be now, you know? So yeah, that's that. Oh like, man, and if you would have started in 2016, we wouldn't have bought the house. Oh, there's so many. Yeah. So many things. Um, it is what it is. Life. But I remember asking, well, what are you going to do specifically? Like, what what is it you're trying to do? Well... That's YouTube. I think I want to be YouTube. And I thought, oh, okay. Uh, how does one make money <laughs> yeah, we off had of a the lot platform of, of YouTube? Yeah, we had a lot of hard conversations. And I remember that's something actually I think that's good mentioning is that with career moves um, on both sides, you end up having to not prove yourself to the other person, but just there are a lot of conversations that you end up having around like, what is your game plan? 
it's one thing I think to be single and make a career move that is a bit risky because you're only affecting your own life. It's another thing to have a life partner and bring them in on these very risky decisions you can make. Mm. Um, and I think it's good to have that like checks and balance, you know? I think you can be in a relationship and not be vested in the other person's profession. But what if they're taking risks like what I do? I think it depends on what they do, you know? I mean, if it's a doctor or whatever, then sure, mm. I guess, unless, you know, malpractice. But, you know, even then, I think you... There's limits on that. I feel like Ish. you need to be at least somewhat aware of what their long-term goals are career-wise. I mean, a lot of people just go to work day in, day out. True. And so long as the money is there, then everything's fine. I guess the, the thing... I could see hiccups in shift work where the person is either out or travel. They travel like 80% of the time, majority of the time. Yeah. Um, they work at night mm. or on the weekends. Remember? Remember when I used to work weekends and you had weekends by yourself and you were just, you had your whole life, your whole weekend life when Chris was, was yeah, working. It was great. And then when Chris wasn't working on weekends, I thought, to- huh? Yeah. Well, I guess I got to take you into consideration. Can't do what I want. Yeah, I had to learn to readjust again. The only other hiccup I see is sex workers. So if you're a sex worker Ooh, yeah. and your partner is either unaware or does not know the extent of the sex work, yeah. uh, That's I could see that as being communication problematic. Big, yeah, communication is the big thing. I think you just got to be really upfront. But I mean, if someone says, I'm a social worker, and then someone else says, I'm a veterinarian, and they meet up and they're a couple, and it's like, oh, yeah, it's, do you have to be, well, I guess, no, you, oh, well, I guess you're right. Because what if you're allergic to animals? Like, oh, I'm allergic to animals. Yeah. Well, I'm covered in animal hair. Yeah. As of right now. Yeah. I came straight from the office. See? I don't think you have to be necessarily interested. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I think I could be, like, I think... If you weren't here, if you did something else, I guess, like I could n- not be that interested in what you're doing, but I am interested in you. So I want to make sure, like, do you enjoy what you do? Do you like it? Oh, you don't. Well, your lack of happiness in your job is affecting this relationship. So mm. I kind of need to know that so I can help you find something else that you enjoy, you know? I know for me, that was why I really wanted to transition to doing YouTube full time and running my own production company full time because I wasn't happy working for other agencies and stuff. And I knew if I didn't change that, like I wouldn't be a good partner anymore and things Mm -hmm. like that. So, you know, I think I just don't see how you could separate the two. What do you miss about being single? This one is from... Rissa 206. Hungry Man Dinners. Do you actually miss the Hungry no. Man? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, is that sarcasm? Or? I mean, kind of, actually. They weren't They weren't bad. My life at that point, I mean, again, dead-end job, not earning very much. Yeah. Like, that time is not rose-colored. It's not romantic in my mind. It was very much just trying to survive trying to figure out, trying to transition. Yeah. So there was not a whole lot that I miss about that period. Couldn't cook. Couldn't cook worth a, a darn. And like D word. Yeah. True. Uh, that, that explains the Hungry Man dinners. Which he's a great cook now, y'all. Crazy. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, not chef level, but I mean, I make competent dinners now. Yeah, you're a great cook. So I don't miss. That's a cook. Okay. Yeah. Good. <laughs> <I'm> good. <laughs> Lack of responsibility. Oh man. Oh man. This is one memory. So bad. So bad. I never. I don't think I ever admitted this to you. Oh, I'm scared now. So we we went somewhere. I think we went to Austin or something for the weekend. Okay. And or I went to Austin for the weekend, and I came back, and there was a whole bunch of flies <laughs> in my apartment. Do <laughs> you remember all the flies? I don't. Oh God. Oh God. So there were flies in my apartment and I was and I just thought, there's a ton of flies in my apartment. I don't know why. So mm-hmm. Just kill them, get them, get them out. And then I went to throw something away in the trash. I had not taken out the trash prior to leaving. Oh. Uh, and so there were maggots. Ooh. It was filled with maggots and I opened it up and more flies yeah, came like, out. 
<laughs> and like I was <laughs> terrified at the level of negligence and just how gross I was. And that was probably the lowest point. Oh, man. Okay. I immediately tied off the bag, went and threw it away, hid my sins as much as I could, came back to the apartment, put a fresh bag in, and was just just trying to like call myself. Like, the flies are going to die in a couple days. Just be real, real clean about it. Don't leave anything out. Um, wow. I do not, I do not miss any of that. About, Don't miss, oh, it's like being single. Yeah. I mean, college is, was a different time. And again, it was messy and sloppy in its own way. Sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. kind of just glad that everything's, I mean, I, I graduated into maturity. Yeah. And even then in the relationship, I still needed more maturation. So would I go back to those times? No, cause I was lonely and not social because I had moved from Laredo after college back into San Antonio. Didn't really know anybody aside from Chris. So Yeah. Um, I think the thing I miss the most about being single, I do miss stuff. Uh, I think the trade-off is worth it, first of all, before you feel a certain type of way. But uh, I do miss a few things. I think the biggest thing I miss is just in regards to... Freedom's a strong word because then it makes you think that in it's marriage you're trapped or independence? something. Independence? Yeah, I think it's more, I just miss the aspects of independence that come with being single. And it really does, for me, come from a place of just wanting to have, I really, hmm, how do I say this? I enjoy change. I think that's a better way. Yeah, see, I think that's a better way to nope. put it. Don't want it. I, I feel like the only constant is change. And so... I find comfort in the chaos of life in general. And I enjoy changing my environment quickly and immediately. And I enjoy pivoting very quickly and being spontaneous in that way when it comes to my career. That's why I'm in film um, and video because you're always learning, you're always trying to keep up. There's always things you can be doing. Um, yeah, you're just always in a state of low-key chaos in the industry. And so I really enjoy that space. And I think you get to do that more when you're single. Um, in every decision I make, I have to keep you in mind. You know? Have to. Well, it's I, like dragging along. Well, I, so I could a not. Piece of dead weight. I mean, I, th I could not keep you in mind in these decisions, but I would not be a very good partner then <laughs> if mm. I did. I mean, because by that logic, like, what would stop me from, um, yeah, just moving back to LA, like, immediately? You know? Just be like, hey, I'm going to LA next month, and I'm not sure how long I'll be out there. I'm going to just kind of wing it for a couple months. I mean, that would just be, I'm, and I'm sure that there's relationships like that, but it's, okay, so what's the question? So am I coming with you? I don't know. Are you coming with me? Right. I'm not paying rent on this. I'm not contributing to the rent anymore, so. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of adversarial again. Mm -hmm. like there's unnecessary friction there. Right, where it's just, instead of saying something like that, it's more like, hey, I have to start planting the seeds of an idea of what if we move to L.A.? And then maybe in a year and a half, that happens. You know what I'm saying? See, I think that's interesting because within the last couple of months, um, and it's not regardless of quarantine, um, I've been open to a like a transition. I've been open to a transition. Yeah. So I think if you, even now, if you were to tell me, what if we move to LA? Okay. I don't like... There's aspects of it I don't like, but there's going to be aspects of any city that we don't like. Sure. So what's the time frame? Like that would, that's my legitimate question. I would just say, what's the time frame? Because yeah. we would need time to get out of the lease, move everything. Um, and then in that time frame, I would need, you know, probably about five, $600 to get my California nursing license until, you know, something else comes up. And then how much are you, how much are we moving for? Like you making a good amount of money? Oh, you are. Okay. Yeah. Then we're definitely doing this. Right. But see, and so, but I guess for me with the whole missing being single thing, it's like, I don't actually have to answer any of those questions oh. to anyone. Gotcha. I just do it. <laughs> well, that's, the other thing is you, you being efficient and just working until 
just working until the skin wears off your hands because you could legitimately work, you know, 12, 14 hours yeah. and then come out of the stupor, get some food and go to sleep and then do it again tomorrow morning. Yeah, totally. So as opposed to now where I'm clingy and I want attention, <laughs> I'm hungry. Are you going to eat? Yeah. You have taught me how to human effectively. I have taught you how to love. How to how, human. How does one human? Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that's the aspect of being single that I miss the most. I also, we talked about this in a previous podcast of the did we get married too young one. Yeah. Mm. In that one, because I think we came to the conclusion in that one where there are certain things that I've actually never gotten to do as I think most young adults get to do before they settle into a long-term relationship. So I've never lived alone. You know, I went from having roommates, having a roommate to having roommates to being married. So I never got those types of things. And I think those moments are good when you're single because it teaches you about yourself and what you enjoy. And I think it's good to have that time period when you're younger where you can, you have enough money where you can actually self-indulge um, because you're in the beginnings of hopefully a good career and things like that. I didn't um, find myself in that, but yeah. I sure. think that's, I think that's a thing. Oh, it's a thing. It's that I def that I didn't Not my lived to. experience. Yeah, that's not part of my lived experience. That I know because of that in the beginnings of our marriage, which I talked about in that episode too, like I was still actually in an adolescent -y kind of state because I just hadn't mm. experienced some things that you learn when you live alone. So I miss that aspect because I never had it. Whereas he had it and it wasn't fun. <laughs> it was messy, y'all. So many flies. So many flies. I still see them in my dreams. So many flies. This is from Rissa206 again. Um, Halise, is it hard for you or is it just weird or different being married to someone who's in a STEM career um does mr hollies think very differently about things and so on and so forth um it's not very hard for me because i come from a family of stem people slash uh traditional professions so as i a lot of my family are teachers nurses technicians um stuff like that so it's not very weird for me if anything it's very familiar and I'm already very uh, aware of just like what those types of jobs entail in regards to emotional responsibility, mm. physical responsibility, and then just things like um, quarantining and things like that, you know, and just like, yeah, I'm fitting to get the flu. <laughs> Especially like when you used to work in the ER. Oh you my know, God. You got sick, sick all the so time. So much. Because, yeah, you're in the ER, you're just exposed to so much stuff. Well, so looking back on it now, I should have been wearing a mask 24-7 yeah. in the ER. Yeah. People were gross. And people would just cough in front of you and say, please, just, just turn your damn head, please. <laughs> yeah. I'm right in front of you. Yeah. So, um, and my dad was a technician um, on the Air Force Base here in San Antonio. And I, would, I grew up like helping him work on medical equipment and things like that. So... It's not very unfamiliar. It's very familiar territory for me, even though I'm in a creative career. I guess I didn't really figure nursing to be STEM. I'm not trying to to start a flame war or anything, but I just didn't really. I mean, it's science based. What what is it? It's science, technology, engineering, and math. I think. Oh, math. Oh. Right. Could you I thought. I guess I thought it was medical. I don't think it's medicine. I think it's math. Oh. What does STEM stand for? Because I think you're thinking about um, tech talks, that's, or TED talks, that's technology, engineering, and... Design. That's, well, e even then, math is, I mean, I guess medicine is science-based. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I'm thinking more of, I don't know, maybe I just don't know what, a, what STEM is, but you know, like you're a math, math professor or, you know, researcher or you work in tech. You are, I, I feel those are specific types of people i don't know what the personality types are because i just don't care <laughs> but um i i can envision how those people are and i don't really think that i am those people you know what i mean ah that's interesting like i lack oh <laughs> <laughs> 
you could <laughs> just take that cut. It's, oh, he realized it. He knew, Oh, he lacks social skills and you know, fixates on certain things. Oh, uh, it's the flies all over again. <laughs> I can see them flying around. Yeah, I mean... Personality faults. Ah, <laughs> swatting them out. Yeah, I think you definitely actually are the STEM type personality because you are very analytical and very literal about a lot of things. Mm. But at the same time, when it comes to your writing, you're very emotional. Um, and when it comes to, again, that whole microcosm thing of being inward i feel like you are very emotional um but you just you have an analytical shield that you put out to the rest of the world Mm. actually so to them yeah you probably give off strong stem vibes interesting (laughs) i guess i don't really see any any compromise to it oh for me as a creative it's more just again well here's a better thing i think it's more just about I don't, I have to have a solid idea before I present it to you. Like I can't present a half-baked idea. That's fair. It has to be very, very laid out or you won't I'm going to harken back to the whole board. you transitioning to YouTube. It's, I want to yeah. do, I want to do, what if I didn't do this? Do what? What if, what if I just didn't, what if I was more contract? Yeah. Oh, pause what does that mean uh you know just did freelance stuff okay in what way (laughs) yeah so that's well i want to work on youtube so you just okay so is youtube the only thing i mean i could do other stuff but it's i more just want to develop youtube so so you want to be a youtuber well yeah okay how how does one make money on that? It's just yeah, it's like why am I pulling teeth? Tell me the things. Yeah, and so at that time I wasn't quite sure actually how I wanted to proceed. I just knew I needed to change something. Mm, that's fair. Oh, so that is that is that would be a pain. <laughs> well, no, I mean it would because you have to. Okay, so how are we gonna do this? And what time frame? Is, hey, so what if we went on vacation? Oh yeah, I mean where would we go? Oh, I'm thinking like. These places. Oh, okay. When do you want to go? Mm, like three weeks. Yeah. Okay. I have to come at you with like all the information. Yeah, that's annoying. Up front. So for this last time with the sabbatical, I took um, for the beginning of this year. You knew the time frame. Yeah. I By the time I had presented it to you, I knew exactly how much money I would have in the business, exactly how much time before that money runs out exactly what i would be doing during the sabbatical like all of those things Mm. and then i presented them to you and you were just like okay why are you looking at me you you seem like you know what you're doing okay it's like okay cool but is that more of a character flaw that (laughs) that you're working with (laughs) as opposed to a stem person like is that i don't know i don't think is that is that just the mark of a sociopath (laughs) I don't think that. (laughs) I just think that it's hard for you. And I've talked with you about this before. You're just so rooted in traditional means of income that you really, it really is hard for you to wrap your head around not following those traditional means of income. And you just are like, but that's not how I've seen countless generations do it before Mm -hmm. me. So, you know, (laughs) how are you different? (laughs) You know? And I think when you're talking about STEM people in general, yeah, they just have that very analytical mind that is very method methodology. Uh, Methodological, no. Methodical. Yeah, the methodical. This is how I got there. This is how I know that you can reach an outcome. So I'm going to do this within the confines or in, within the constraints of this society, you know? I know you don't want this one, but this is one is from Jessica Momani. Momani? 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 Momani. Okay. Sorry in advance, Jessica, for saying your name wrong. Um, were you ever in love before your current relationship? How did those experiences affect you? How do you know what you have is the real thing? What was your response to this initially? 
My response, I did respond to them in the comments saying, Mr. Halise will probably have more to say about this because me as a young G did not give my heart out freely. <laughs> mm. I was not reckless with said heart. So my answer and like my immediate answer to the question is no. I was never in love before I met you. I was with people and I was infatuated, lustful, if you will, but I was not in love with them. See, I would argue the same thing that I was um, infatuated and lustful, but I mean, I don't in like the moment, but in the moment of being with those people, did you, would you have defined it that way? Even in the moment when I was with those people, I knew that's oh, what it was. No. See, like in well, the yeah. moment you felt like you so were in love with them. The definition of love back in your like, that wasn't even 20. It's like, what do you know about anything? Yeah. And the fact that, again, your uh, your frontal lobe is not fully matured, like sure. your rational mind is not fully matured, you're not really making good decisions up until about 25 for men, I forget about women, it's a little earlier, you can go... You're getting off topic, I'm, were you I'm, in love it's or just, not? I, mean, <laughs> I defined it as love, but it's like, what what was it? It's just like, it, it was a... Like, it was in college. Like, how feasible was that in the middle of Indiana? Or it's, I mean, people, it was a, it was a nexus of people gathering from across the nations. Like, realistically, how is this going to work? Like, how is this going to work? You're going to have to move, and you're going to have to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it was just weird. Like, I, I would have defined it as, a, yeah, and it didn't, it didn't end well. It was the longest relationship that I had ever been in. It was only, like, six months. Um, and yeah, it didn't end well. Ah, uh, I mean, there was some, like it was, it was rocky and I was trying to discover myself again because I, I, I had never been in a serious relationship or a, even a long-term relationship more than a couple days. Um, and I never knew what it was like to be wanted or for sp other people to see me as an object of desire, both, you know, physically and also relationship material. Um, some reason in Laredo is just like, nope, no, no, not, nothing that I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then, yeah, there was more interest in college. And then, you know, there was a long-term relationship. Um, but it's, it wasn't like, it just didn't make sense. Cause I mean, you think back and it's, did we, were we really compatible? Like, were we, did we actually have that much in common was, was any of that genuine or real or concrete or was it all superficial and I mean, I don't, I don't know. It was only six months, sure. but looking back on it. Yeah. I, I think it was, what's, there's a plant that has just very superficial root system and it easily just topples over. Mm. It was still development. It was still in its developmental stages. Um, but I think as a result, uh, I mean, for good and bad, it shaped the way that I saw future relationships. Yeah. Um, but I always kind of just threw myself into relationships so it's just you know emotionally yeah i mean it's either you 100. either you either want to be with the person or you don't it's it's just how it is nah, i'd be having my foot out the door backup plan mm. so on and so forth <laughs> yeah i um that's interesting i mean for me that's interesting that you say like how feasible is this when you're in college because i met you in college hmm <laughs> So it's feasible. See, but, um, <laughs> I, but I was no longer in college. Yeah, you weren't, but I still was. Well, yeah, but so I think two people in that, and there were so many people that got married in college yeah. for me and for you too. Actually, I don't really know any of them. I don't know those people. I knew of I know them. they exist. The ring before spring people. Yeah, the ring before spring people. To answer the first question, no, I was not in, in love before this relationship. This is the, you are the first and only Hopefully, love of my life, and Hope, yeah, I mean that's true. You never a lot no, can like, happen no, in I, a lifetime. I got over myself real quick. A like, lot yep. can happen in a lifetime. <laughs> I, I would hope you would move on. <laughs> um, a lot can happen in a lifetime. So yes, and then the second question, because of that, how did that shape my experience in this relationship? Um, it kind of ties into your third, which was uh, how do you know if you're with the right person? And I don't think there's a universal thing for that. I think the only way you can know you're with the right person is if you know yourself well enough. Because I think you'll find the right person for where you're, you are in your life currently. So 
I was never in love with anyone. And I always knew that in those current relationships that I had been in, I wasn't I also wasn't in very many relationships. Um, and that's because I think I knew myself well enough to know what would work for me long term. And yeah, that played a huge factor. So by the time I met you, I knew that you would be, I didn't know that he was gonna be the love of my life, and I think I've said this in other podcast episodes, but I knew you were someone that would define how I would look at all future relationships after you, if we worked out or not. Mm. I knew you would be a defining relationship of my life. And I knew that pretty quickly. Um, and I think that's because I already knew myself rel- relatively well. Considering my age, I knew myself relatively well at that age. Very mature. For, for that age. For that age, I was mature. <laughs> In general, I wasn't. Before my age, I was all right. <laughs> um, yeah, and so I think that played a factor. I also think that people grow, ideally you grow together, you know? I think you are way more my soulmate, whatever love of my life now than you were when we met and you Mm. grew into that and like literally you grew into that i feel like physically you changed into that you know what do you mean like you gained weight and which was great (laughs) um you grew a beard which was great you fixed your personal style which was great like you became you became the man i always wanted Mm. you know oh and the, Aww. but like the template was there to begin with, you know? And I, th- I would hope that I have become more of the partner that you need. I don't know if I have, if I'm going to be perfectly honest. I think I've definitely become a woman, but I don't know if I am necessarily, if I've become like the woman that you necessarily need. I think you are a hundred percent. I mean, there's no hesitation with that. Um, I would hesitate. I think that last. <laughs> I think I that last hesitate. question. I, I forgot about that last question yeah, about yeah. how do you how know do you that know? it's it's real? Yeah. I think looking back on that relationship, just because. What, wait, get, what are you talking about? Oh, oh, a previous one. Yeah, the previous one. Initially, I was describing it through the lens of um, being jaded, and then also being defensive about it, mm-hmm. because the relationship didn't end the way that I envisioned it, it would. And part of that was, you know, a lack of maturity. Part of that was um, just not being prepared for the moment. Um, But I mean, it it ended abruptly and I never got, and I've told you about this, like I never got uh, rationalization as to why it ended. So I was left to wonder about myself and like, was it, was it a character flaw? Was it, was I just not the right person? Was it any, any of my numerous character flaws at the time um, responsible for ending it? Was it because I wasn't going to develop into anybody? Was it like, yeah, I mean, like legitimately. Jesus, okay. Because I didn't know what I was doing and I wanted to get into pre-med, but I wasn't sure. So all my insecurities were just intensified. And that whole year after was me stabilizing mm. um, and trying to determine who I was, trying to figure out what I was doing with my life and X, Y, and Z. So, I mean, it really was a shift but in the moment, I would say that, yeah, um, had things worked out, then I would, I mean, I wouldn't know what, what would be the determining factor of it. It's either you want to be with that person or you don't. Yeah. And you, I would say that it's a lack of compromise. Like there's always going to be, and we've talked about this in previous episodes, but there's always going to be doubt. Mm. You're mm-hmm. never going to be a... I don't even think you're ever going to be not like a, in the high 90s, 90% sure about whether you should be in the relationship. Yeah. But it's more, I don't see the point in being in a temporary relationship or like being in a relationship for right now. That doesn't make sense to me. Hmm. It's always, I am with this person because they make me happy or they they fulfill me. I feel like I fulfill them and then... I, I, if I don't, like, if it's not working out, then the relationship just disintegrates. But, and if not, then you can also be stubborn about it. But I, it's, Power through. Right. Well, I mean, some of it's the, the self-realization that you speak about, mm. where it's knowing enough about yourself that 
this relationship isn't going anywhere because he's still stuck at this dead-end job at a call center, and it's been 10 years. So if I would have been at the call center this whole time, would we even still be in the relationship? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, there probably would have been... Some come to Jesus. Yeah, I mean, there would have been more more hiccups along the way. Yeah, for sure. Um, but had that relationship worked all the way through, then I would say, yeah, I mean, it's it's the one that I don't even know about fate anymore, but it was the one that, that we are making work. And the one that you and I have now, it's the one that we are making work because it's not easy. Mm-hmm. It's not like, uh, it's not how it's described in the media where it's one puzzle piece fits into the right spot. It's more of a seed. So it is just like a plant, like your plant videos. <laughs> well, no, because the plant, sometimes the plants make it, sometimes the plants don't, but the plants do the best with the environment that they have, the nutrients and everything else that's brought into it. And they just, it either works or it doesn't. And then you as a person growing the plant or the pet or whatever, you know, you either foster the relationship, you give it attention or you let it atrophy and, and wither and die. Yeah. Um, and then you can neglect it and come back to it, but there's always going to be, you know, that one leaf that turned brown and died and you're going to look at it and you're going to remember. Yeah. And the numerous times that you do that, and then the plant's ultimately going to give up the ghost because it wants to. (laughs) Um, But I I think you just have to get, in typical Mr. Holly's fashion, you just have to get 100% into it. Yeah. I feel like rather than asking yourself, is this the real thing? Maybe ask yourself something along the lines of, if this ends will I be grateful for the experience? Because I know that was something that when you and I were talking about breaking up um, and getting, a, I guess, a divorce, um, that was like what shifted in my head. Because similar, like you said, you're never, you're always going to have, there's always going to be room for some doubt yeah. in the relationship, especially if you're someone who is independently minded and independently focused like me. I am very independently focused and I've had to learn to become, I think, more codependent and just um, having a partner in general. But even then, my mind's still always, I'm self-aware enough to know that like my mind goes there all the time. Um even if it's just like little stuff that you'll do, like you'll say something and, and like, like the other day when you, I got mad at you about, or when you got mad about like cleaning the tub or something. And in my, like my, immediately my mind is like, I don't even have to be here. Like, I don't have to be here. Like, I can just <laughs> freaking move out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think I, well, you know, check my face. <laughs> you're good. Okay. You're, you know, I don't even have in to, your head. Like, I don't even think you realize I don't have to be here right now. <laughs> Like, no one's making me stay. I can bounce. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. <laughs> and that, that is the beauty of it. So I think it really, it, it's more about don't ask yourself if this is the real thing because there's way too much pressure. And you really, that's the beauty of existing. You won't know. So, <laughs> and you'll never know. Well, if because if everything was certain, then there would be no surprise. There would be no yeah. glee out of it. Yeah, totally. I think the thing you should ask yourself is if this ends, will I be grateful for what I've experienced here? And that was the thing that I, I think I told you that when we were sort of having discussions around possibly ending things, I said, I came to that realization of like, wow, we are at the doorstep of the ending of this relationship possibly. And going into this, I'm not mad. If this ends, I don't, and it was in that, I was like, I don't want this to end. But if this is the end, I'm not mad. I'm grateful that I got to invest in someone and watch them become something because we've been together so long i really got to see you find a career and become Mm. a really amazing man and i was really i remember in that moment i was really proud of what we had fostered together because i knew how much you had affected me and i would be if we were ending i would be moving into the rest of my life a different person for the better Mm. So I think you should ask questions like that. Does this person make you better? You know, begrudgingly, (laughs) do they make you better? (laughs) Um, And go from there. And if, 
if your question, if your answers to questions like that of do they make me better are I like no, they don't actually. They make they bring me into a negative headspace or they're maybe they're manipulative or emotionally abusive, like things like that. Things these are the types of things to ask yourself, mm. and that's how you kind of know that. Not that you have found the one, but at least you know that you've found someone who is complimenting you in your life and where you're going. And that's that's worth starting to think about long term with a person. I still think barring um, abusive relationships, yeah. um, it's a balance. So mm. do you feel like the relationship is or do you feel like you are better in the relationship or as a result of the relationship? Or worse? Or do you feel like you're suffering as a result of it? Yeah. And so if you feel like it's tipping in, in that scale on the favorable side, then yeah, then you, you just stick with it because it's always going to be a balancing act. There will always be that one person that, oh, what if you, what if it would have worked out or would have, could have, or what if I was with somebody else? Like, I don't, it's interesting because I don't remember that podcast, how I answered about soulmates. I don't remember how I answered it. I think you said you didn't believe in them. Yeah, because I, I think you can make it work with a multitude of options. Yeah. But, I mean, I think that as, like, I think as of now, I mean, you are, by far, you are the only and best option um, <laughs> for, no, I'm, I'm serious. Um, man, what I was supposed to, oh, so I was actually going to make the analogy or compare favorable relationships or whether you should stay in it as because it's oh, okay so what if right now it tilts in that scale but tomorrow it tilts the other way mm-hmm. it's like yeah that's that's the nature of things it's gonna be, it's gonna tip in one side and tip on the other side but yeah. does one outnumber the other right um the culmination of everything right so it's like overall has it been positive or negative it's like a lock it's like a lock of hair oh yeah because it's there are parts of it so you could think of the past You're like settled in like i'm uh, about to yeah. school some folks <laughs> Well, I mean, so you, you think about a, a lock or a, or a timeline, and it can be healthy towards the end or towards one side of it, and it looks like it's doing well, and then you're going to have divots of points of weakness. But if that point of weakness is a long strand or a long enough strand where just a little bit of pressure is going to break off the lock, then there you have it. Yeah, it can it can be just a couple of bad days. Yeah. And that can very easily throw a stable relationship into, you know, a non-relationship. Yeah. Um, and I think, and sometimes that's of your own volition, that's you voluntarily doing it, or sometimes it's just the way things naturally cleave. Yeah. But you can have good and bad, but you can still have the lock, and it can be, you know, ma- macerated or whatever, and then you just decide to keep the lock or, you know, work on the lock, work on the relationship, make it stronger, do what you can mm-hmm. to keep it going. I think the other thing you can ask too, rather than is this the right person or the is this real, is am I still willing to try? I think that's also a really good gauge because as soon as you give up and you're not willing to invest in the relationship anymore, then it's done. Like that's it. And there's nothing that can be salvaged. But you've, if you have two people that are trying that's a like to me that's the definition of a good relationship because there actually aren't any good ones um <laughs> there aren't like everyone anyone who says that their relationship is like amazing or perfect they're lying because it takes work when i see, when i hear someone say like oh i'm in a good relationship i when I, I internally think we're both trying that's it like we're both trying um so maybe that's a better question too to ask yourself Am I still willing to try? And I think even you, I've, you and I have like asked each other, like, are you still trying? Are we still trying? You know? Or it's yeah. been like questions similar in that realm. You know, I'm still vested in this or I'm still, I still want to do this. I still want to work at this. Um, I think that's better. I had another idea in my head, but it's gone. Oh, okay. Anyway. Thank you so much for asking questions. Are you going to think about it? Oh, that's just indigestion right now. Okay. (laughs) But no. Yeah, thanks very much for the topics. Stumble well, stumble on. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.